In this video we're going to code out our mouse drag script. Um, we're just going to code out a couple of tests to see whether the user is in fact dragging and then in the next video we'll do the GUI and then the um, the actual logic, what happens when we finish the drag and select the units and stuff. But firstly there's a couple of things I noticed um, from the previous video. The first thing is that our debug draw ray function isn't working properly because we can't see it in the scene and that's because in the other video let me go down here. We replaced the integer value of MathF infinity. So I don't know if this is a Unity error or whether it's not compatible with this, but we can't multiply the direction by MathF infinity. I'm just going to put a thousand there. So if we go and play the game again, it should be working just fine. If it loads, my laptop's quite slow. And uh, yeah, so our draw ray is working now. And the second thing I forgot to put in a couple of lines of code is that when we select multiple units, and we want to deselect a unit, it works fine, but it works even if we do not hold the shift key. So we want this to happen if we hold the shift key to manage the group. We don't want it to happen when we let go of the shift key. When we let go of the shift key, you want to deselect everything apart from the unit we've selected. So I hope you got that, guys. So it's just a couple of lines of code I need to put in. So it happens here. Okay, so if the unit's already currently selected in our array list, we want to remove it only if the shift key is down. So shift key's down. Okay, and if the shift keys are not down, we want to remove everything apart from the unit we've selected. Okay, so I'm just going to copy and paste some code. So, firstly, deselect all the units in it. Secondly, activate the graphic on the unit we've just selected. So, I'm going to try and highlight everything here. <laughs> and the last thing is actually add it to the selected units. Okay, so copy and paste this. Okay, so that's all we need to do for that one. So, let's double check, see if it works. Okay, so holding shift, selecting multiple units, letting go of shift, selecting unit. Okay, so the rest of them will get removed from the group and only that one selected. Okay, let's try again. Select all of them and shift. We're going to hold shift still and it's just going to remove that one group, uh, one unit from the group. Okay, guys. Okay. So let's move on to the mouse drag stuff. So I'm just going to define a couple more um, class variables at the top. The first one is going to be a boolean to test whether the user is actually dragging or not. So it's going to be private static boolean and it's going to be user is dragging. So this is boolean. I'm going to make it public actually in case other scripts and stuff want to know and there's only going to be one instance of it in the game so static. Okay so a couple more so it's going to be a private static and this is going to be a float and we're going to call it time limit before declare drag. Okay, so let, before I continue, let me explain the tests we're going to do. So the first test is going to be a time-based test and we're going to say, well, the users just click the mouse button down. How long do we need to wait until we declare that user's dragging? Because if the user's holding the mouse button down for a particular amount of time, we probably probably assume that the user's dragging. So I'm going to say one second. So user puts the mouse button down. After one second, boom, we know the user's dragging. Let's go into a drag mode, okay? So um, the time limit is going to be one second, so one, and the, another one to accommodate this uh, value. Float again, time left before declare drag. All right, so on every update of the frame when the user is holding the mouse button down, we're going to minus uh, time delta time, which is the time um, since the last frame ran from this value. Okay, guys? And uh, is there anything else we need to do? There's another one. There's a private, private float, uh, and a static one as well. We're not going to have any more instances. Private static float, mouse drag start. Okay, so the start of the mouse drag. So you might say, well, we've already got mouse down point, and that stores the point at which the mouse is first held down. What's the difference between mouse drag start? Well, the mouse drag start is going to store the point in the 2D screen space, not the 3D coordinate space. So we're going to test, we're going to store the point at which the user clicks down in the screen space. So a vector 2. And I should have made that a vector 2. So let's do that now. So mouse drag start, OK. All right, so the second test we're going to do, so we've talked about the time limit test. The second test is to do with the mouse's position. So uh, like we've done in our helper functions at the bottom with the mouse click, we've got a click zone, 1.3. If the mouse releases the, if the user releases the mouse, 
1.3 units within the mouse down point we click and we can say if it's outside that point and the user is holding the mouse down we're going to drag okay so it will become a bit more simple when we um, code it in so I'm going to replace this function this uh, variable I'm going to call it quick click drag zone all right click drag zone and I'm going to put it at the top of the script as a class variable because we're going to use it multiple times so I'm just going to replace all these here go up to the thing and then say private static float 1.3 f because we're going to use this in our next function okay so to do the position test we're going to say is the user dragging relative to the mouse drag start point okay so um, let's make this a public boolean user dragging by position okay so we're checking if this is dragging by position by the position of the mouse okay so vector 2 first we need the drag start point so we can call it drag start point the point at which the user started dragging if that is the case and another one another vector 2 the new point so the, the mouse p position basically the point on this frame okay okay so this is a really simple function it's just an if statement basically so if something happens we're going to return true else return false okay so because this is a vector 2 we're going to test the x and y values of these two methods or uh, values sorry so if new point dot x is greater than drag start point plus the click drag zone all right or new point dot x is less than the drag start point minus the click drag zone okay so checking the x coordinates and we could also check the y coordinates like this as well so just replace the um ah I've got x point x replace x with y okay so y point y okay so why is that still a red line if this is it okay or <laughs> I don't need that all there um return true else return false okay guys so just to explain that function so we, we um, hold the mouse button down at this point let's say that and if we drag up or down or diagonally 1.3 units away from that point we can say yes the user is actually dragging so we go into a drag mode okay so this is the test we're going to do and that's it for the helper function so let's go back into our logic so one thing I'm going to put before the drag is the mouse down point because that might come in handy later and below that we're going to do the mouse drag okay and this is the mouse click and you can only click if the mouse if the user is not dragging to begin with so if the user is not dragging if the user is not dragging sorry we can do all of our code with the mouse click else nothing okay so we're going to drag and just to make things simpler we can just say yeah end of uh, is dragging is user dragging and this one is the end of raycast hit just so we can you know know things what's going on so all of our mouse drag functionality is going to go here and we're going to just template it out and do our tests in this video so we can say if input get mouse button down so I'm just going to template this out firstly so else if input mouse button if the if the mouse button's already down and we want to do some stuff okay so the last one is if input get mouse up so if the user released the mouse we want stuff to happen as well okay so we're going to use all of these uh, different states of the mouse and because we use else if two of them cannot happen at the same time okay so before we get into the meat of the tests and stuff we're going to say if the user firstly clicks the mouse down time left before the drag equals the time limit because we're setting the limit when the user first clicks down so we're going to say the time left is one second okay and um, here is another important thing we need to do the mouse drag start position so we can say the mouse drag start is the input mouse position without the capital letter on the mouse but that doesn't matter mouse position 
Okay, so just to store the first point at which the user clicks the mouse down. And when the user clicks the mouse up, we can say time left before the drag equals zero. Just to zero it out, doesn't it's not really important, but just to keep things nice and readable, we can say, yeah, when the user clicks up, the time left before drag can be zero again. Okay, and we can say user is dragging equals false. Because when the user releases the mouse, he's not doing anything. He's not clicking or dragging, so we can just say, no, nope, the user's not dragging or anything. Okay, so our main logic is in this area here. So, so this in this block we're going to do our tests. So we can say if the user is not dragging, let's do the tests. Because if the user is already dragging, we don't need to do the tests. So if the user is not dragging, we can say time left before the we declare the drag minus equals time delta time because we're minusing the time from the last frame and we're updating this value and when it gets to zero we can say yep the user is now dragging so let's do that test first so if time left left before declare drag I really don't like it when it the mono develop doesn't help me out so it's less or equal to zero because it can be less than that if it goes if the time before the last frame minus is less than zero um, we can say user is dragging equals true, so the user is dragging. If tests pass, or if they're true, the user is dragging. Okay, so that's that one out of the way. And uh, after all the tests are done, we can say, okay, user is dragging, let's compute it. So let's do GUI and stuff like that. So we can all for this video, we're going to do is debug log yes user is dragging okay so this should work now with our first test which is the time test so let's see if there's any errors or anything I don't think there is okay so I'm gonna hold the mouse button down for a second and after that second we should say yes the user is actually dragging down here in our console so holding it down okay the user dragging straight away time limit before drag, time left before drag so when we first declare things, the time left is the time limit which is one second if the user's not dragging, time left is minus equal delta time if it's if the time left is less or equal to zero, user's dragging true oh, ok I missed out the if statement, so if the user is dragging debug log if the user is dragging so sorry about that guys, I needed to review all that before I could determine the error So. OK, hold down for a second. Boom. Yes, the user's dragging because he's hold the mouse down for a second, so he must be dragging. All right, so let's do the position test now. And it's very simple to do. We just call our function we declared earlier. So if the time before drag is zero, or what was our function called again? User dragging by position. OK, so the mouse the point where the user first started the drag is the mouse da -da -da, the mouse drag start mouse drag start and the new point is simply the input mouse position um close off the function okay so now we're saying if the time left is less or equal to 0 or the user is dragging using the position of the mouse to determine whether the user is dragging the user is in fact dragging. Okay, guys, I'm going to remove that if statement and uh, curly braces on there. Okay, and that should all that should determine whether the user is dragging. Okay, so um, this is the completed test all in action. So I'm going to click and then drag straight away. Boom! Yes, the user is dragging. All right, and just to confirm this is working, I'm going to comment out the time test. So comment that out. So now we're just testing the position. Okay, the mouse is down, I'm clicking down, but no matter how long I click down for, the, the system's not going to know if I'm dragging, so I'm going to remove it outside that 1.3 units. Boom. Yes, the user's dragging because it's outside the 1.3 units. Alright. And we could debug something out here. We can say debug log um, user no longer dragging. Alright, so let's just double check things. Okay, so dragging, yes, the user's dragging, let go of the mouse, user's no longer dragging, and then we can click things like normal. 
Okay, so everything's working fine. Alright guys, so now we know whether the user is dragging or not, we can do the GUI and then compute what happens when the users stop dragging. We can select the objects that are in inside the drag and then select them basically. Okay, so let's comment out this test firstly. Save it out, I've done a lot in this video and uh, that's it for this video. So thanks for watching guys, I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.